Oh, good evening, and welcome to a special edition of DIY Gaming. I'm your host, Brian Beach, and tonight we take a break from GameCraft in pursuit of an art form refined in the leisure of gentlemanly self-importance. And that art form is none other than, than art. As your source for tips and walkthroughs for making your own prototype and playtesting components, I feel it would be a great disservice if we didn't go over an ever important aspect of game design, and that's the game's artwork. So to do that, we're going to head over to the computer. Now, this hits really close to home since I'm no artist, and I'm not about to shell out a bunch of dough until I'm sure my prototype is ready. So I give you my art hack for the artless. You will need two pieces of software for this technique, your photo editor where you'll design your printed components, and a 3D modeling tool. Some of you will already be familiar with digital modeling if you're 3D printing components, but if you don't already own a copy of a good modeling program, there are two excellent ones free to download from the World Wide Web. You have Blender, which is very well known, and there's many online tutorials that can be found to navigate this heavier modeling program. But for simplicity's sake, I prefer Animator. It requires less experience, but it's still a free and powerful modeler. The reason 3D modeling software works so well is because it handles something that non-artists struggle with, and that's perspective. Now, where I can draw a two-dimensional square on a piece of paper, a 3D modeling program can obtain instant access to the depth of a cube's surface, or position one object behind another, all the while maintaining this realistic relationship between the two objects. Secondly, I can stage a scene. Much like moving furniture around in a room, with a swish of a mouse cursor, I can freeze the scene I want for the perfect moment of my component's art. Then we have simple texturing, which just requires a few mouse clicks. The program takes care of the shading, which I don't even begin to understand, and we can even render glass setting some objects behind a transparent surface. Background images can be rendered as backdrops behind my object, or I can set up the background as something that contrasts with my object and key it out later in my photo editor to preserve the single object from manipulating the image. Regardless of the method you use to set up this final scene, use the program to export this as a picture file and use your photo editor to finalize the layout before printing. Using 3D modeling software has been a staple for me ever since my earliest game making projects. But I want to emphasize that I will pay a professional artist before my game gets too far outside of my trusted playtesting circle. More recently, we've been using this process to take our conceptual art a step further. PubMeeple's resident artist, Shuck, is currently using 3D models to composite artwork for an up-and-coming game that he designed, Space Perimeter. For the rest of us, though, we can use this as concept art, a way of more clearly expressing to the artist what we had in our mind when we designed our game. Good artwork is essential for the escape a game provides. It lures the players into the game and assists them to suspend their disbelief. Now, I think this is even important for you and your playtesters while you're in the fledgling stage of your game development, so don't ignore this important aspect of game design. Well, thanks for joining me tonight for DIY Gaming. There's some exciting things happening in the pub, so make sure you subscribe to this channel and check back with us. And in the meantime... Keep gaming, amigo. <laughs> oh. Oh, my wife's going to kill me. I'm not supposed to smoke in the house. <laughs>